What's up YouTube? Got uh, another little update for the uh, power stroke here. Um, I uh, This was kind of just a last minute thing. Not, not even really last minute. It was just kind of like a pure coincidence. Um, my dad and I were at an auction um, last weekend and at that auction was this Western plow. And uh, I've always kind of wanted a, a plow for the truck, but never wanted to spend the money that they seem to go for. Uh, you know, I don't need one that bad, and they seem to usually go for, you know, two to five grand, it seems like, for, you know, a, a nice plow, you know, with everything, the mount and the harness and everything that you need. Um, and I, it's just not really justifiable for me. For a while, I had the four-wheeler for plowing my property out here. I recently sold the uh, four-wheeler to put the money aside to buy a side-by-side -side, and then you know things change things happen well I ended up coming across the deal on this uh, skid steer here so I ended up spending the money I had set aside for the side-by-side -side on the skid steer anyway long story short the skid steer was going to be what I was going to plow with this year um, but I have a fairly steep driveway and I wasn't sure how well the skid steer was going to do I mean it is four-wheel drive I'm sure it would do fine I do have a snow blade for the skid steer I also have a regular bucket, um, so I'm sure it would have been just fine. But this, anyway, was at this auction, right? And the tag on it said that it came off of a 99 F350. And I'm like, okay, these frames are all the same, at least for a fact, um, from 99 to 04. I don't know what all they changed, but I know for a fact that 99 to 04, uh, the frames and everything should be the same. So I knew the mount would fit my truck, and I was like, well, I suppose if it went cheap enough, I'd probably buy it. Well, they couldn't tell us if they had any of the wiring or anything for it. They just did, they didn't know. The auctioneers had no clue, so when they auctioned it off, they auctioned it as, we might have the wiring, we might not have the wiring, we have no clue. So this ended up going for 600 bucks, which in my opinion is a pretty good deal. I feel like I could sell the plow and the mount alone for probably more than 600 bucks. I could probably get, you know, 1,000, 1,200 bucks pretty easily out of it. It's a, it's an ultra mount, it's the newer style. I mean, it's still, you know, a little bit of an older plow, but, you know, it's in really good shape. There's no rusted through holes or anything. The actual blade itself, it's got some surface rust starting, but the actual blade itself is in super good shape. And uh, I was like, well, for 600 bucks, it's worth the gamble. So I figured I couldn't lose if for some reason the mounts didn't work or whatever. I, I could just sell the plow and get my money back, and I wasn't too worried about it. Well, when I went in to go play, pay for the plow, uh, sitting there at the office was the box full of all of the wiring, the module, all the wiring, the controller, all the manuals, everything for this plow. So I not only got the plow and the mount, but I got the controller and all of the wiring that came off of that truck for uh, 600 bucks, which is pretty freaking awesome. And as you can see here, I've got the mounts here on the front of the truck. Now, I wanted to make this video not only to show that I've got the plow on the truck, and that's cool, but um, I can't find anything online about anybody putting a, a Western plow on one of these trucks. I mean, I, I assume maybe uh, there's not too many people that buy used plows that put them on used trucks, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe most people just buy brand new ones and then have the, you know, the dealers install them or whatnot. I don't really know. Um, this is a first for me. I've never had a truck with a plow, so this was all a learning experience, but I figured I could make it all work. So I just wanted to show if there is anybody out there trying to put a Western Ultramount on an 04 f-250 and maybe even work for some of the newer trucks too maybe 05 to 7s as well i don't know i know this for a fact should work with 99 to 04s but this is hang on i got a light here <clears throat> this is the mount which is this whole this deal here that comes down and around and back up so i had to drill these two holes here in the frame not a big deal pretty easy there's two more bolts on the back side that go up. They're on the other side of this frame rail. They're, they're just, they go up and that's it. So there's those two bolts, these two bolts, but those two have holes already in the frame or in the, uh, there's like a plate welded to the frame. There's holes in that and that this mount bolts to those two holes. 
and then you drill these two holes. There is two more holes right there that you have to drill. And then, um, there's, can't really see them, but there's a, this is actually a bracket that bolts over the top of the frame rail to the uh, mount. There's two bolts up in the top of that bracket, holding that bracket to the mount, and then that bracket bolting to the frame. Like I said, I had to drill those two holes. And then all else that holds it on is right here in the front. It uses two of the factory um, bumper bolt holes to bolt it there, and then that's it. So since this is an 05 bumper, I had to notch this out a little bit so that it didn't cover these because normally it, it cuts off right here. And so it would cover these bolts up and then the bumper wouldn't, you know, sit right or whatever. So I had to cut this out, not a big deal. You know, just a used bumper that I paid a little bit of nothing for. Um, and then that was how the mounts went on. So the mounts were actually surprisingly easy. I was nervous that the mount going on the truck was gonna be the harder part of it. I wasn't super concerned with the wiring because it looked to all be there. So I thought the mount was gonna be the hard part. The mount honestly took me only a couple of hours and I was all by myself no help and I just did it on my shop floor um, over in there I had it parked in there and uh, got that all knocked out in a few hours it was pretty easy just with uh, as long as you've got a bunch of half inch hardware laying around which I happen to have because obviously this didn't come with any of the hardware um, I had a bunch of hardware laying around and a bunch of uh, of the nylock nuts which is what I used on the whole thing so that nothing comes loose hopefully but anyway <clears throat> This is what they call, I believe, a Western, um, obviously the plow is a Western Ultramount, but then the, the wiring system is, is, has a four port, three plug module for a straight blade. So all the plugs are right here. You have this one, which is your main power to the blade. Um, this one here, which is your battery power i don't know exactly what they all do this one's the lights this one's main power to the pump or something and then this one must be for all the controls you're up down left and right i assume um and then the wiring is a little bit of a mess i i could not find anything i tried to find videos of somebody else how they ran the wiring because I could not figure out a good way to run this wiring. And I know it looks a little crappy. I probably could have done a little bit better, but I was just really anxious to get it mounted to the truck and see if it was all gonna work because I just really wanted it all to work. The only thing that I had to go buy was this, uh, I don't even know if you can see it too well, this solenoid right here. It's just a, what they call a motor relay, just something you can buy right at like O'Reilly's. Um, so I went and picked that up, super easy to hook up. Um, like I said, this plow actually came with all of the um, documentation, like all of the manuals. So there's actually a specific wiring diagram for um, not this truck, but for this plow. So it shows you a generic version of where everything needs to run. So that was super easy or, or super convenient to have in, in wiring this. This wire here runs into the cab for the controller. This is power going to the solenoid. This is ground. Um, and then you have another power coming off the solenoid going to your main power for the main power plug. And then there is a light harness that's tucked down in here. That's another reason why this is such a mess. The, the light harness is, is really long and it's just kind of tucked down in there. And I don't have that part hooked up yet because this, like I said, was off of a 99. So the headlight harness is actually slightly different. But I called the Western dealer and they said it was going to be like $500 in parts to get the right wiring harness and the newer style module. And I was like, yeah, no thanks. It's just a farm truck. So what I plan to do is just order the male and female ends for my headlights, and I'm just gonna cut the plugs off of the Western harness, and I'll wire those in, and hopefully get all the headlights to work on the plow too. But I got the wiring running across here, and then you have another headlight harness that's kind of tucked down in here. I know it's not a perfect spot for it, but these 6L engine bays have no room for anything. So I couldn't figure out where I wanted to put this module. Well, you can't see it, but it's laying sideways right in here, right next to this battery. It's not hard mounted, but the battery is hard mounted and this thing cannot come out of there. It can't even wiggle, it's, it's, it's in there. So it's not hard mounted, but it's tucked in there and I, don't, I really don't put a lot of miles on this truck, so I'm not super worried about it, but 
you know, hopefully we don't have any issues with that. But um, just in case anybody else wanted an idea, I guess, of how the wiring needs to go, I don't know if this is right or completely wrong um, for how, you know, maybe the Western dealers would have wired it or mounted everything, whatever. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I couldn't find anything online showing anything. So this is what I did, and I'm just trying to help out hopefully the next guy that uh, is trying to put a plow like this on a truck like this. So I'm not going to hook it up in this video and function test it because I've already function tested it, and it works perfect. I was super happy to find out that everything works great. Um, it is a little bit of a pain. Um I'm sure after doing it a few times, hooking up and disconnecting from it will be easier. But disconnecting this thing, I sprayed a bunch of grease on this thing because I couldn't get it to come off. So I've got it um, strapped to my posts here of the building. Um, and that's how I had to pull the blade off of the truck when I disconnected it. Um, so oh, I probably should have greased it, you know, before I put the blade in the first time. But I was too excited and wanted to get it hooked up. <laughs> Um, I actually used the skid steer to put it on the truck. I, instead of trying to get, you know, the elevation of this just right and whatever, get it lined up, I just grabbed onto it with the forks and slid it on the truck. It was super easy. And then these things here, you just pull these pins out. This flips up, locks down onto that pin right there, and it relocks into another hole up here. Super easy peasy. Got your three plugs on this side for all the things to hook up. One thing that I did think was a little bit weird is the light harness has to be plugged in for everything to work. Um, if you do not have the light harness plugged in, because I actually, when I was trying to take the plow off, I couldn't get it to come off. So I was like, well, let me raise it back up and I'll try and shim the plow up a little bit, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, I didn't plug in the light harness and I couldn't get the plow to work again. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? Um, when I very first wired everything, put the plow on, I couldn't get it to work. I couldn't figure out why. I thought it was something silly, but I couldn't figure out why there was just nothing. There was no power anywhere. Um, on this cable that runs into the cab, obviously I, I got to get a mount for the controller because right now it's just dangling here and there's not a good spot for it because the way that I ran it, again, like I said, it's not probably the ideal way to do it. Um, it's not very long because I only had about this much cord that came through the firewall to plug this controller into. So I probably could have found a better way to run the wires, but that was what worked for me. So that's how I did it. Anyway, also with that wire that comes through the firewall for the controller, there's a little red wire with a little T fuse that plugs into an existing spot in your fuse panel and then has a fuse in it. Well, I didn't look at it closely, and there's actually a spot on top of that little T for two fuses, and I just didn't know that. Um, when I pulled it out, I, I used, um, I think, an ignition um, run feed fuse panel in here, or fuse in here, and that worked perfect. I had to pull the fuse out, put the fuse in the T so that there were two fuses in the T, and then put that in I can just show you, I can just pop this thing off real fast. Oh, maybe. Come on. There we go. Take that guy off of there. So, right here, this guy, there is actually, you can't see it, Maybe too well, but there's two fuses that tee into that guy. That guy just plugs into the fuse box, into whatever fuse you pick. It just needs to be one that's on keyed ignition, and I think it needs to have a fair amount of amps going to it. Um, because I tried running it off of a 5 amp, and it wouldn't power it. So I think this is running on a 15 amp now, and it works just fine. So now... Um, when everything is plugged in and you turn the key on, the controller lights up. You can turn the plow on with this button and start plowing. But anyway, the whole problem the whole time that I was having was that second fuse missing in this little T. It has to have both of those fuses to work. And I didn't even see that there was a second spot or I probably would have had it working immediately. 
that's my own fault. But anyway, I hope that wasn't uh, too too much. But and like I said, I don't even know if this is actually going to help anybody out. But like I said, I couldn't find any videos online of anybody else putting a used plow on one of these trucks or wiring it or anything. So hopefully this is a little bit helpful to someone um, because I'm, I'm super excited. I mean, I'm not going to be mad if we don't get any snow because I hate the snow, but um, I'm excited to try it out and see how it works. I did spend uh, probably about 30, 40 minutes yesterday, you know, getting the chains adjusted right because this is a lifted truck. So it is, you know, slightly tall getting the chains adjusted just right so that when I dropped the plow all the way down, it wasn't, you know, floating six inches above the ground or, you know, slammed so hard into the ground that it's just riding on the skis with, you know, four inches of slack in the chains. I've got it adjusted to where all the way down on the plow is got a little bit of tension on the chains and it's floating on the skis just slightly, but not a ton of weight. So super excited to, uh, try this guy out. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. Again, you know, not the uh, cleanest wiring in there, but it is just a farm truck, so it'll do. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy the video and uh, I will probably make another video if we get some snow and i'll put the plow on the truck and i'll hook it all up and i'll show you guys it uh functioning and maybe even pushing some snow um because i'm i'm kind of excited to to give that a whirl but anyway thanks for watching guys and uh i will catch you in the next one